Sure. Where do you get the energy and all the ideas at? I mean, you are a one-person force. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what, is, what inspires you to do this? Because you're an independent artist. Yes, I am. You're not tied to anybody, so it's no. everything that happens, you generate from inside. Yes. So where does that come where from? Where do I get the energy? And why? Um, well, I, I'm, I'm naturally a pretty energetic person, I think, just from, from, from that point of it. I I'm, I'm, could be described as type A. <laughs> I'm a Gemini. Um, but I do have a lot of energy. I do have a lot of drive. And, uh, and I do have a lot of ideas. And not all of them are good, <laughs> which I've learned. But, um, right, you know, I find this business to be a real cycle for me. Um, it's very cyclical. You, you get into the cycle where you're, or the part of the cycle where you're choosing repertoire and deciding to record a new record and, you know, pre-production, planning the recording, and then, you know, doing the actual recording in the studio, mixing, mastering, artwork, all of that. And at that point, you usually feel completely tapped out because you've just basically put, you know, all your creative ideas of the last year or so um, on tape, so to speak. And then you get in the touring and promoting mode, which, which is a whole other, other thing. And then some time off, and then it kind of starts all again. So I think for me, now being in this business for 10 years, you know, uh, seven albums, I really do feel that cycle. It makes sense to me, and I've kind of acclimatized myself to it in a way. And uh, I've, I've acclimatized my creative process to that cycle in a way. Um, I don't know if that makes it, <laughs> explains but it, but... I think my point is, you don't come at this as a dreamer. You, uh, is, was it because of your mom and your dad background in music that it's, there are practical steps to all this? Well, yeah, I mean, for me, being in the music business was a pretty natural thing, which is, you know, that's not the case for a lot of people. For me, being in the studio was like being at home. It was very cozy. I grew up, you know, watching my, my mom in the studio. And so being from a musical family, it's, it feels like I've followed a very natural path. Um, I, I, I like to think of myself as a dreamer, but, but I'm, I've definitely got it well balanced with a pretty practical sense. And again, after making records, I have the perspective um, and, you know, a, a good healthy dose of, of realism, you know, not to say that I'm, I'm jaded in any way, but I do try to approach um, making a record and, 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 you know, going on a tour as a business plan. It has to be a good business plan, you know, but it's a, if I have my business plan in place, then it allows me to, it frees up that part of my brain for the creative process and to enjoy, you know, singing live and all, and touring and all the great stuff that's, that's a lot of fun. Now, if you look, if you look back and you say, what are the points that work for you? What what periods, what things did you do that worked that allowed that allowed you to reach the public? Then the next thing to begin touring, because each one of those is is a difficult step to make. Yeah. Are there like places where you says, oh, all of a sudden this clicked in and it worked. This one clicked and it worked, and all of a sudden I found myself the music in the stores, the music. Mm. out there on radio and I'm able to play and, and actually sell records too. Well, it was a very gradual process, but you're right, there were points along the way. You know, um, I, f I feel like in the beginning stages of my my career I was sort of spinning my wheels in a way. I mean, obviously I was doing a lot of learning and, and no experiences are worthless experiences. They're all very, very valuable. But as far as getting to that next level, if you want to call that next level, being able to tour, um, being able to have better distribution. Um, I was sort of spinning spinning my wheels and, and spending a lot of time making a record and then having this, you know, what I thought was a really great record and sort of running out of steam at that point. And I, and I see that happen with a lot of people. They put all their, all their energy, all their money, all their resources into into creating this product and then they're they're lost and they don't know where to go and it ends up you know nobody ends up hearing it which is a shame 
so um, I remember, I guess it was when I put the Like a Lover album out, so that was about 2005. In 2004, I, I sat down and I put t together a three-year plan for myself. Um, because prior to that, I was sort of just just running along, just keeping up, just sort of, again, spinning my wheels. Mm -hmm. And I never really sat down. And actually, Richard Mills, the agent uh, from, from Feldman, is responsible for this because he came to see me at the Montreal Bistro and he said, what's your plan? You know, I said, well, uh, I just want to make music and tour and sing and record. He said, but what's your, do you have a, do you have a five year plan? Do you have a three year plan? And um, it was a really great piece of advice. And I went home and the next day I woke up, got my coffee and sat down and wrote myself a three year plan that involved the making of like a lover and the plan to try to get some distribution and and uh, and get an agent because that's what I thought was the most valuable thing for me at the time not a manager I was managing my career on my own I needed a booking agent and uh, you know I, I thought I'm gonna put a Christmas album out after that and I, I had my whole plan laid out and I pretty much followed it to a T and I just made a new three-year plan for myself because the three years is up, but, um, you know, it was a matter of creating opportunities um, where an agent could come come out to a show and see, and see some potential, see some opportunity there. Um, I, play, I think I was playing at the Rex for the Jazz Festival, and the place was just, just packed, you know, line up around the corner, and uh, an agent from the agency group came at just the perfect moment, you know, it was the, there was a lineup, it was hopping, you know, and immediately he sees, oh, she's got something going on, you know, she's, she's managed to do this on her own, so I'm re ready to get on board, and so that was the agent part of it, and things started to fall together after that. Um, you there also, were you made inroads into Quebec, which is a, which, which is a mm -hmm. bit bilingual and everything. Yeah, well, I, I'm not bilingual. I, no. I, I I work very hard to to be able to talk about my music in French and and do interviews in French and um, I'm you know I, I muddle through somehow <laughs> but um, yeah I I when I had got a distribution deal which at the time was with Fusion um, just in times distribution company that's no longer around they have a really strong team in Quebec. That's one of one of the things that appealed to me about that company. Um, it was based out of Montreal, and um, you know, it's Mon Quebec is known as a market uh, or a culture really that that supports the arts, supports music, supports and buys music and, and buys music. And um, I've always loved Montreal, and I've always loved you know making that making that trip to Montreal and. I'd had some great experiences there with the jazz festival, and I thought, you know, this this is a this is a good opportunity to to make a connection with a company that has some knowledge of this this territory. And um, of course, I'd always loved singing in different languages, mostly Brazilian, Portuguese, and French. And I had on my previous records, and so that really took hold in in Quebec. It was a wonderful thing. You know, there was just this; they sort of embraced me and my music and and it was definitely a reciprocal love I love the culture there I love the people there um, and they could probably